Welcome back to Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. Today's video, powered by Hayabusa, is all about being unorthodox. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about how to be unorthodox. I created a video recently about how to beat an unorthodox fighter, and I actually went into the comments to see a lot of people asking the opposite, how to be unorthodox. So that is today's video. And I think a lot of examples of fighters you would see trying to be unorthodox would be someone recently, probably Israel Adesanya, known as the last style bender because he's able to mix and match different styles. A lot of unorthodox will see like Dominic Cruz because of the way he moves, his feints, his angles, that is also being unorthodox. We've seen Sean O'Malley with spin kicks, side kicks, stance switching. That's another good example. But even in the older times, we've seen different types of strikes from like Anderson Silva knocking people out with different unorthodox techniques. So the idea of being unorthodox and being successful has been a part of martial arts for a while. Those who've seen my style, I've always prided myself in forward pressure, good power, and, and very strong basics and fundamentals. But as martial arts evolves and develops, I think it's very important to have a good set of basics. I don't want you learning unorthodox strikes before you learn your basic strikes. And I think this is the importance of everyone listening to the channel. Israel Adesanya has been 80 professional kickboxing fights, 20 now fight, uh, UFC fights, fighting at the highest level. The man knows how to be unorthodox. I mean, you might naturally, there's some people who just naturally have that style of being a little bit more free, a little bit more dynamic, and that's okay. And they might be able to progress in that way a little bit faster. But still, regardless of your style and your ability, it's important to have good, strong basics. Okay, so let's get into today's video because I'm gonna give you five ways for you to be unorthodox. The first way, and I think the most obvious way, is through switching stances. So when we learn traditional martial arts, and a lot of coaches still today, always keep you in your one dominant stance, which is good because you need to develop that side as, as one strong side. And usually in that power side, you're good at blocking, you're good power, and everything is more structured. But I also think it's important there might be a moment. Your right side might just not be doing enough to maybe score points or to win the fight or to do some damage. It's just not working. So having the ability to switch stances now. So from the way you switch, from the way you move, okay, being from a different stance. So right away by switching stances, you're creating different types of offense, different types of angles, and your opponent should be practicing different types of footwork so you can start playing different traps the way you move them. And all of those unorthodox fighters that I talked about in the beginning all have the ability to switch stances. And again, your, each stance doesn't have to be equal, right? Your right side might be better than your left, but for that moment to change, maybe to get your opponent to think, to create an off angle is really important. A lot of times when you watch fighters get those big knockouts, and it's not talked about a lot, but when you watch those highlight reels, watch the position the fighter is in when they get the knockout. They'll be fighting orthodox the whole time, but all of a sudden when the knockout happened, they just so happened that they went into a southpaw and they got the knockout. So being unorthodox and practicing how to fight on both stances is just gonna help you. Now, the second thing an unorthodox fighter could do, I mean, this is something you can add, is the lead hand down. So usually here, when you learn, keep your hands up. You ask anybody who's never done martial arts, what's the first thing you should do? Keep your hands up, right? Our hands are here as high as possible. So now if I wanna be unorthodox, I do this. I bring this lead hand down. So by bringing the lead hand, I can be in a little bit more of a Philly shell, some crossover defense, right? One, it kind of lowers my center line, but it uh, narrows my center line, but it leaves my stance bladed, which if I can slip and counter, it's okay, as long as I'm not taking low kicks. But I can do that and switch stances. So by having this lead hand moving and down, it's creating a distraction from my opponent. So one thing I like to do even, even though my hands are up, I like to play a little bit more with like an, a lead hand moving so I can jab, block, parry. So using my lead hand a little bit more will help create it. But ideally, if it comes down, down, you'll see a lot of the fighters being unorthodox here. The benefit of having this lead hand down is actually really good in MMA. 
right? Because with the small glove, you have to rely on head movement a lot, right? So your hands necessarily won't be here in MMA. So by having this lead hand down here, if you're a striker, could play as a benefit because one, you're threatening this low area. So if somebody wants to dip their head down to shoot, I have one, an underhook to stable myself. Two, I have an uppercut to try to crack them as they come in. But I know that one, I'm aware of the counter shot, so I have to move my head. And that's the other thing that an unorthodox fighter will do. They're not gonna walk at you like this. So with this lead hand down, they move their head. So now the first two, when you put them together, I have my lead hand moving and my head this low angle here to attack. Now I'm switching stances, creating different angles, different footwork patterns. So you could already see the unorthodox style and structure starting to build. The third thing we're gonna see, I mentioned it with Dominic Cruz, is a lot of fainting, all right? It's not just in a straight line. I'm fainting to kind of create angled enters. I'm drawing you into something. I'm creating a, a distance deception, a draw and attack. So number three is about feints and drawing someone in, right? So Anderson Silva, when he's moving his head to catch you and counter you, that's countering, that's using head movements and drawing someone in. Distance deception, if my head is here, right, and my opponent is gonna throw to my target, pull back and counter. The Floyd Mayweather, pull, counter. My lead hand is down, give you my head, pull and counter right back. So being unorthodox, drawing someone in, Okay, but it has to come with fainting. I might faint with my head, I might single faint. So even my faints are created with rhythm, tempos, and unorthodox. I'm fainting with my leg, with my kick. I'm fainting with my left side, my right side, my head. So, so many things are going on that's making them unorthodox. Dominic Cruz is just moving, creating his hands everywhere to confuse you to be able to create an entered attack. He's not gonna enter on a straight line. He's gonna use his feint, his movement, good distance control, distance deceptions, use his feints to safely enter to confuse you and overload your system. So, fainting and distance deception is very important to being unorthodox. Now, the fourth thing we want to be is we want to be a little bit more unorthodox the way we do throw our strikes. Now, the easiest way is not throwing your combinations with the simple left-right, left-right cadence, right? And we always see jab, low kick, one, two, three, kick. Let's start breaking the combinations up to same side attacking. One of my favorite combinations is using my jab in rhythm and tempo. I'm not throwing it as a single, right? That's what's creating strikes and difference. So I'm using rhythm, tempo, and the same side. I might use my jab to set up my left kick. One of the big power shots we'll see is right kick, uh, right hand, right? I can go one, two, I can come off of it. It's just being unorthodox the way I throw my combinations, okay? And the easiest way is one, throw the combination from the same side. Same hand, same hand, even if it's a double kick, kick knee. So throwing combinations off the same side. The second way you can make your combination more unorthodox is always changing the rhythm and tempo of it. The best example I like to use for this is the jab cross hook, right? You can go left, right, left. That's one tempo, one rhythm. Now I can do one, two, three, right? One, two, pause, three. I can go one, two, three. So I'm constantly changing the rhythm. And now if I mix in different tempo rhythm jabs, head, body, head, body, head, head, body, jab, jab, blinding my opponent with a lot of different strikes, all of a sudden I'm creating so many different things, so many different offenses by changing rhythm and tempo, okay? So number four was same side combinations, not going left, right, left, right, as well as changing the rhythm and the tempo and the cadence of your combinations. Now, the fifth and final thing you're gonna do to be an unorthodox fighter is change the angle of your strike. Do not throw in that traditional pattern, right? One, two, one, two. We know where it's coming, but simple, one, two. Change the angle, one, overhand, one, Long uppercut, jab, long up, jab, cut down. So I'm throwing things on odd angles, which usually your opponent's not able to block them. We're used to blocking here, parries, shell, and head movement, right? Everything's here. But now all of a sudden the shot's coming down from here. I have a question mark kick cutting down, a 45 kick, you know? Now the front kick's going to the face. So front kick to the face, low kick, head kick, spinning back kick. 
We see that from Sean O'Malley. You have no idea what attack he is going to do. There was a front kick, spinning back kick, side kick, fainting a kick into a right hand. So he's fainting, changing his strikes and using multiple strikes, kind of creating those feints, angle changes, same side combination, stance switching. So he's a good example of someone being really unorthodox to be successful and throwing in those odd angles. Israel Adesanya, if he's knocking you out, it's from an upward angle, maybe a good question mark kick, right? So it's all attacking on weird style angles. And that's what's going to really make you successful. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed today's video, but just remember, I can't stress this point enough. It's important to know your basics. Be strong in your fundamentals. You can't build a big tower or build building with a solid, without a solid foundation, right? Build the foundations, build strong. As you build through your martial arts curriculum and you progress as a martial artist, this is when you want to start adding little changes to your styles. But let me tell you, practice the basics, good power style, but adding and adapting, you know, as you become more advanced, is just going to help you out. All right, hope you enjoyed today's video. Make sure you check out the sponsors attached to the video, Hayabusa, by going to HayabusaFight.com. Check out their Hayabusa boxing gloves and gear line as they're my personal favorite. Also, Perfect Sports Nutrition, description below. Use the code Bazooka20 to get 20% off your entire order. And BazookaShop.com if you like any of the Bazooka merchandise that I'm rocking. Thank you for sharing, liking, and guess what? Just like every other video, we're going to see you next time here at Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA.